All right, cool. Uh, last talk before lunch. Um, sorry to drag this long, I guess. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, things we learn uh, curating pre-trained data for the DOMA and OMO projects. Um, I try my best to have minimum overlap with uh, henna slides on the first day. Um, there are a couple points that overlap. Uh, but um, yeah, let's get started. So um, DOMA is this corpus that we curated to train language models AI2. Uh, stands for data to feed almost appetite. No one came up with the name. I'm very jealous, it's a very good name. Uh, in terms of like timeline, uh, it, uh, we started around April, 2023. We had the first version in June, 2023. Um, we released this first version in August, um, and then we are up to like version 1.6 uh, that we put out in end of January alongside the manuscript. Um, and these are the core contributors um, of the DOMA project. Um, so DOMA, I don't know if, if folks got it from Hannah's talk, it's really in my mind two parts, right? There is the corpus, it has the three billion token, whatever. I'm not gonna talk much about that. Uh, when I talk about more is like how that integrates with the software part. Um, part of, um, of how to make DOMA a successful effort was to build the right software um, to go to do the kind of operation that we wanna do. Um, so the way we thought about curating this data is we split things into these four parts. Um, there is a data acquisition. This one depends on like the source that you're trying to acquire. Are you reading for common crawl? Are you reading books? Whatever. Um, things get put in a common format. And then we had these two steps. There was a step where you would tag content. You were running models or classified or like rules or any other operations that say we should keep this content or should remove this content. Um, and then we had a separate stage where we were actually mixing the data sets. The reason why we separate them is if we want to change one part of how we curate the data set, we don't have to rerun the entire suite of, of modification. We can just run one of them, one of these other taggers, and do another mix. And so we'll do this loop. We tag, we mix a new data set, we run experiments. Um, these are sort of the four pieces of, of um, code that we develop. Um, there is some source specific preparation, data preparation. Um, we have some filters that aim at improving quality. Um, quotes are very much necessary around the word quality. Um, there's something around safety. Uh, so there's like things like removing personal identifying information. Um, and then deduplication also took a lot of engineering. Um, so this is how this pipeline look. And I'll show you this on Monday. Um, the thing that I want to point out is that typical, like, you know, removal factor or compression factor is around 40x or 50x. Uh, this is like very lenient filtering. Uh, if you go more aggressive, you can remove more. So you start with a lot of data, you end up with very few, uh, very little data in comparison. Um, this is how the, our experimental setups look like. We run this 1B ultra regressive pipelines with a learning rate set to 150 billion tokens. Um, and the thing to keep, I'd like to keep in mind is how expensive these experiments are. Um, each idea uh, required like, you know, 5K dollar verification. Now we were running a lot of them on Lumi as, as um, uh, Nicholas mentioned. So it was nice, we had this compute grant. It was not real money. It was never my money, uh, but you know, it's whatever. Um, so the part that I'm really happy about is like how the, some of the engineers decision we made around this. Uh, one thing that we realized early on is that we needed this toolkit to be really, really fast. Um, so we have this mix uh, Python and REST implementation. Uh, a lot of the tags are done in Python because they leverage the ML ecosystem of there's models and libraries that people have. But things like duplication and mixing, uh, we decided to port them in REST because they're much faster there. Um, we took this approach that is different from how other folks are approaching the space. Instead of going to say Ray or um, um, like PySpark immediately, we really prioritize being able to run this on a single node. Um, so the library does scale to, to like this distributed framework, but we really want to, you know, we want people from, uh, from AI2 and outside to contribute. And you can only do that if you can run this stuff on a single node. If you have to set up your cluster first, people are not going to contribute. Um, 
For data application, we ended up using Bloom filters. This was, uh, Bloom filters are uh, Dirk's uh, idea. He really pushed for it. Um, and they're really nice in terms of speed. They're linear. You do data application in linear time. Um, and like to give you some context, we can fuzzy dedupe about 3 trillion tokens in more or less 12 hours using one of the big uh, instances with a lot of memory on AWS. And it costs about $600. And, you know, it's a tenth of what we were paying before for ablation. So I think it's a good, good value. Um, one thing that I would like to people to take away from this talk that I, it always blows my mind uh, is that when you think about this thing to curate data, there's always a big difference between what you think your pipeline is doing and what's actually happening. Um, and some of these results are very unexpected and requires a lot of like actual data inspections. Um, so, for example, this is uh, Nicholas when writing the Dolma paper ran this interesting correlation analysis between, you know, we have this various steps in the pipeline, how do they correlate with each other? And it was kind of surprising that they sort of do not correlate at all. Uh, you have, um, or yeah, you have some operation that you think they would correlate well with each other. Um, so I don't know uh, if you use some of the case speech uh, filtering with some of the quality filtering, you would think there would be some correlation. There is very little. And the other thing that it's interesting is that these three are bucket by um, perplexity, similarity to Wikipedia. So like, you know, the head is like things are more similar to Wikipedia, tail on this side, things are less similar. Um, the distribution of what gets removed by all these filters is kind of the same, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you would think that like, oh, some of this filter, for sure, they will remove more things from tail. And there are some filters that remove more things from tail, but in general, it was like equally distributed, which is kind of, they operate in strange ways. Um, another interesting, and I can talk about more specific example later. I'm just trying to stay within the time. Um, Another interesting aspect is uh, deduplication. Um, so this is roughly how we do deduplication. Uh, we basically, for each paragraph, we have a 13 gram sliding window. Uh, each n-gram gets put in a Bloom filter and the Bloom filter tells us, I've seen this n-gram before or not. And so for each paragraph, we can tag um, how, what was the fraction of this paragraph that had the matching Bloom filter. We aggregate the score for document. If a document has above 30% duplication, we remove it. Um, so I was very, uh, very excited for this experience. Like, this filter is very aggressive, uh, removes a lot of documents. I've, at this point, I had inspected, say, I think over a thousand documents. I would look for them, check for duplication, uh, and I was expecting a lot of like different results. Um, uh, but then, you know, I run the experiment at 1B scale, and if you look at the orange line, which is the deduplicated uh, uh, experiment against the baseline, uh, when you look at how it progresses the experiment, at the beginning, it's like actually the baseline, the one with duplication, uh, it's, it does better. Uh, and then deduplication fix after. And, you know, this might be that uh, uh, the model has to see enough duplicates uh, in order to that to start hurt. And at the beginning, you know, a lot of distribution is you don't see that many duplicates, mm -hmm. or it might be because they were early stages of training, and so it's also a problem. But this was kind of interesting. Um, so, like one of the tools, the two tools that we rely a lot when doing the work is we have these two components. We have this Dolma, oh, extra S, this Dolma stat command that you point it to one of these attributes and it plots distribution for you. It tells you, oh, this many uh, are tagged with this score or this other score. And the other thing that it was invaluable was that we had, we index our um, collection um, before any major filtering. So we could explore, hey, well, gets, um, you know, if something says a duplicate, can I find the duplicates in the collection? Um, in general, this curation has a ton of side effects uh, that we, um, like we weren't expecting and really make, make you question of like, is this filter that I have, yes, has a better score, but is it doing what I actually think it's doing? So these are things like uh, the language filtering operates as a quality classifier because if you have a document where the HTML parsing fail and there are a lot of just a lot of gibberish, it will be tagged as non-English. It's not that it's not English; it's just the filtering failed. So language filtering is kind of quality classifier. 
deduplication. Uh, what gets like a, de a duplicate is kind of interesting. Um, so like on high quality documents, these are documents that are uh, score high by any of the quality filters. A lot of the duplication comes from say, terms of service pages on websites. Uh, all WordPress websites have very similar terms of service with just a few line change. That's where a lot of the duplicates come from. But um, on the low quality documents, a lot of the spam uh, gets removed as duplicate because spam uses all the same technique. It kind of looks the same. So even your duplication is like, has just very different effects, uh, different parts of the distribution. Um, and then the last bit is um, experimenting with global operations such as deduplication or mixing sources is really hard. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the experiments don't go the way you want because you're making big operation, you're changing distribution, you might be removing some good tokens when you are introducing your new data. Uh, I'll skip this part um, and just wrap up by saying, uh, so things that we're working out for Dolma, I'm still feeding the model lots of tokens. This is me. Uh, this is amazing. This is an illustration from 1976 about a new breed of supercomputer. This is not AI generated. Uh, it's just old. Um, so things that I'm doing for the current version of the corpus is 1.7. We're sort of validation stage. There's better be duplication, model based filtering. Um, and then we're thinking about things that we want to do for 2.0, improve the toolkit, just better connection between the data operation and what you see in benchmarks. Some very cool research here that we'll talk about. And then just more sources. This is not exclusive to DOMA, but um, I think diversifying the, the kind of data that's in model in this model is interesting. That's it.